The Bahamian-born deportee Jean Ronnie John Charles's legal team is not giving up. Lead attorney Fred Smith QC has indicated plans to take the landmark case all the way to London-based Privy Council. Mr. Smith contends that the Upper Lake justices did not deal with the constitutional issues in the case. The case, he said, was not about a person born in the Bahamas, whether they can be legally deported or expelled, and whether the Supreme Court has the power to order the government to release somebody or whether the Immigration Department does have the power to detain people who were born in the Bahamas or are citizens in waiting remaining unresolved. Everybody, he added, is still up in air about their rights, including the government, his clients, and thousands of people in his position. Jean Charles was yesterday drawn to tears and anger after losing his bid in the Court of Appeal. Appellate judges Sir Hartman Longley, Sir Michael Barnett, and Justice John Isaacs found there was no constitutional breach in Jean Charles's detention and subsequent deportation from the Bahamas due to the uncertainty surrounding his identity. According to Sir Michael, the Supreme Court judge in the matter, that is Gregory Hilton, fell in error when he proceeded with the application for constitutional relief. However, he added that the appellate ruling did not prevent Jean Charles from now applying for constitutional relief, adding that there may be more appropriate causes of action to obtain relief. This, according to Sir Michael, include an action in tort for wrongful arrest and false imprisonment. Meantime, the Minnesota administration is getting a scolding from Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell, who is condemning the decision to lease the town center mall from Cabinet Minister Brent Simonet as a shameful, naked conflict of interest. Sounding off in a press release, the opposition senator accused the government of feathering the nest of the Minister of Immigration with a lease for five years for the General Post Office's new temporary home. This says Mr. Mitchell is in open and brazen self-dealing. The government was expected to proceed with a resolution in this regard on Wednesday. As read by Leader of Government Business in the House of Assembly, Renwood Wells, here's what's on the table. The owners of the town center mall suited, situated at the northeast intersection of Blue Hill and Independence Drive, have agreed to rent suitable space for the relocation of all functions of the General Post Office to that site at the generous and commercially, commercially concessionary rate of $12 per square foot, far below the going commercial rates for business premises in the island of New Providence. And whereas one of the beneficial owners of the said town center mall is a serving cabinet minister who did not take part in the discussions leading to the decision to accept the offer to lease portions of the building which would be made suitable for the operations of the General Post Office. Plagued with deep-rooted mold infestation and other harmful environmental pathogens, coupled with air conditioning rules that led to repeated industrial action, the East Hill Street Post Office was earlier this year condemned. As Mr. Wells put it yesterday, subsequent efforts to build a post office at the independent shopping center was met with resounding rejection. An alternative site was considered. The government had some months back determined that the old Phil's Food Service building on Gladstone Road was ideal. However, there were structural defects and technical issues that the government says required a massive financial undertaking at the expense of taxpayers. Furthermore, it would take at least a year or two to complete. The town center mall would serve as a temporary location for the post office until a permanent home is constructed via a public-private partnership. But Mr. Mitchell contends that the government is seeking to reinvent the wheel. When the current administration came to office, he said, the heavy lifting had been done. Traffic studies, engineering reports, social impact studies had all been completed. Now the FNM, he said, comes along with a resolution, the effect of which is to abandon all that has already been done, waste all the money already spent with a poorly hatched, cooked up scheme to fix one of their brothers. As far as the PLP senator sees things, at the end of the five-year lease, the government will have improved the landlord's property and instead of a depreciated asset, the landlord will be left with an appreciating asset. So the government again, he said, is arranging a benefit for one of its cabinet ministers. Debate on the resolution is scheduled to take place next Wednesday. Minister Simonet is not expected to be a part of that debate.
The government denying claims that the Bahamas is one of 21 countries said to be participating in golden passport schemes where foreigners sought citizenship in an effort to evade taxes in their home country. The London-based newspaper The Guardian, which broke the story this week, suggested that these golden passport schemes threaten international efforts to combat tax evasion and that this fast-expanding industry earned $3 billion. The report issued by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, said while residents and citizenship by investment schemes allow individuals to obtain citizenship or residence rights through local investments or against a flat fee for perfectly legitimate reasons, they can also be potentially misused to hide their assets offshore by escaping reporting under the OECD common reporting standard. In particular, identity cards and other documentation obtained through CBI-RBI schemes can potentially be misused, abused to represent an individual's jurisdiction of tax residence and to endanger the proper operation of the CRS due diligence procedures. It added the article said that nations on this list offer foreigner citizenship or residency in exchange for donations to a sovereign trust fund or investments in property or government bonds. It also reported that the countries like Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Kitts and Nevis sold 16,000 passports since relaunching its program in 2006. The OECD also believes that this ease in obtaining another nationality undermines information sharing and explained that these countries lure potential investors with low income tax rates without requiring these individuals to spread a significant amount of time in that country. In an effort to combat this notion, the organization also published literature educating parties that can potentially become affected. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.